A motorcyclist faces charges after a weekend accident. Police say a woman was ejected during the crash. Plus, a local bridge is under construction when the roadway is scheduled to reopen. And a state line middle school looks to the skies, the event for students to get a glimpse of the solar eclipse. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. Thanks for joining us. A Rockford man is arrested after police say he lost control of his motorcycle while driving under the influence. Saturday evening, Rockford police were called to the area of East State Street in Fairview for reports of a motorcycle crash. Officers say Justin Booth was driving a motorcycle when he lost control. That caused the woman who was his passenger to fall off the bike and slide underneath a car. Both Booth and the 37-year-old woman were taken to the hospital. They are expected to be okay. Booth is charged with failure to reduce speed to avoid an accident and aggravated DUI. A police pursuit over the weekend ends with a car crashing into a house. David Reed faces several charges, including aggravated fleeing to elude and possession of cocaine with intent to deliver. On Sunday, Rockford officers tried to stop a car in Park Avenue, but the driver took off. A short time later, the car was spotted speeding through the intersection of Whitman and North Church. That's when police say the driver, David Reed, lost control and crashed into the porch of a nearby home. Both Reed and his passenger were treated for their injuries. Reed was also wanted on warrants out of Rockford and Winnebago County. For several minutes today, people stopped what they were doing and looked up to see the moon slip in front of the sun. My word. Yeah! <laughs> Look at the beauty. It'll be another 20 years before Americans experience another total solar eclipse on this scale. Southern Illinois had the best view around, but the skies over the state line also darkened. Here in the Rockford area, we got just over 90% totality, but it was still quite the sight. Drea Baroni went to an event bringing together some of our area's youngest sky watchers. Drea, how was it? Yeah, Mimi, I was over at Roscoe Middle School. It was great to see those kids' reactions. The whole school came outside to watch. It's about 600 kids all excited to see the eclipse. The students there have been learning all about the science behind it for the past few weeks. Today, they got to see all they've been learning about with their own eyes, and they all had a lot to say about it. Um, I was like, dang, it looks like a piece of cheese. <laughs> if you have solar eclipse, uh, solar eclipse glasses, go look at it. If you don't, don't look at it. Never seen a solar eclipse. This is my first time. Definitely recommend these. I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I couldn't make, name a better experience. And those students weren't the only excited ones. Their teachers and the school's principal were outside with their solar eclipse glasses on too. Coming up later at 6, we'll hear how one Roscoe Science teacher prepared her students for this big event. Mimi. All right, thanks, Drea. There were viewing parties all across the state line to check out the solar eclipse. Boone County's Conservation District and the Ida Public Library partnered up to give people a viewing spot. Glasses were handed out free of charge. Families had the chance to participate in activities on the lawn and take photos together. The Conservation District's program coordinator says the eclipse is a great way for people to build a relationship with nature. I think that um, there's that amazing uh, amazing things that you can see in nature and sometimes it's right there in front of you looking at a flower or a bird or a, a squirrel out your window but sometimes there are these really cool celestial events that we can all see together and notice together so it's a way for people to interact with their environment and the world a couple of area food trucks were also on hand offering some picnic snacks the presumptive Republican presidential nominee says he does not support a national ban on abortion. Donald Trump made the announcement in a taped video release on his social media site today. Trump did not lay out a timeline for when in a pregnancy he believes abortion should be banned or cite any scientific data. He said it's a state issue and that voters should follow their hearts. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. Many states will... The country's most prominent groups opposed to abortion rights says it's deeply disappointed in Trump's position. President Biden makes a trip to the Windy City, Air Force One touching down at O'Hare Airport earlier today. 
From there, the president headed downtown for an event. Biden's visit comes after he unveiled a new student loan forgiveness plan. That announcement was made in Madison, Wisconsin. Under the plan, debt would be wiped out for those making repayments for more than two decades. We made a commitment to fix our broken student loan system because while college degree still is a ticket to the middle class, that ticket's becoming much too expensive. The ability for working and middle class folks to repay their student loans has become so burdensome that a lot can't repay it for even decades after being in school. The White House estimates Biden's plan would cancel student loan debt for some 4 million borrowers. Four city drivers won't see any savings at the pump this week. The average price of gas in Rockford sits at $3.78 a gallon. That's 15 cents higher than a month ago and a cent higher than a year ago. Analysts at Gas Buddy say refinery maintenance, the switch to summer gasoline, and the rising price of oil are leading factors for the high gas prices being seen across the nation. Construction begins to replace a local overpass. Work on the bridge carrying Mulford Road over I-39 and US-20 has started. Mulford Road between Sandy Hollow and Linden Road will be closed for the foreseeable future. A detour will direct drivers to use Harrison Avenue, Perryville Road or Linden Road. The bridge is expected to reopen in September. Another road in the four cities under construction, Bell School Road from Argus to Royal Toon Drive is getting some improvements. The work will consist of pavement widening, resurfacing, new traffic signal installations and more. The Bell School and Guilford Road intersection will be reconstructed. Work will be done in stages that will cause Bell School to be closed to traffic at times. The project is set to be complete by November. Israel announces a date it's set for its invasion into the Gazan city of Rafah. Up next, this comes as U.S. officials debate over restricting military aid to the Middle Eastern ally. And coming up at 6, the man accused of killing a DeKalb County deputy in a crash is released from jail. The judge's decision stems from the Safety Act. Our temperatures in the 60s right now will drop briefly here as we go throughout this evening back down into the 40s. We continue with the sunshine, but there are some showers to talk about. A look at when to expect the rain to move back in coming up in the first warm forecast a little later. Israel's Prime Minister escalates his pledge to invade the southern Gaza city of Rafah. He says a date is set. Washington correspondent Basil John reports with the latest reactions from U.S. officials. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced a date is set for an operation in the Gaza city, Rafah. We have not been briefed on that day. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller says the U.S. has warned Israel to not invade Rafah, which holds more than 1.4 million civilians. We have made clear to them that we think that there is a better way to achieve what is a legitimate goal, which is to uh, degrade and dismantle and defeat the Hamas battalions that still remain in Rafah. Israel faces growing international pressure as its operations have led to the deaths of thousands of Palestinians and more than 200 aid workers. Miller says the U.S. is encouraging Israel to do more to help civilians. Initial steps they've taken over the past few days, they represent a dramatic improvement if fully implemented, but we're going to judge them ultimately by the results. Maryland Democratic Senator Chris Van Hollen said on CBS's Face the Nation that the U.S. should not send any more weapons unless Israel meets certain conditions. We should not be sending more uh, offensive weapons uh, to Israel, not to stop them permanently, but to effectively use our levers. But Wisconsin Republican Congressman Derek Van Orden disagrees and says Israel is doing everything it has to. For Nancy Pelosi and 40 other Democrats to tell the Secretary of State to stop sending uh, arms to our closest ally in the region during a time of war is unconscionable. Reporting in Washington, I'm Basil John. Well, the sky was clear over Rockford for today's solar eclipse. After the break, Candace tells us when rain clouds could cover our skies once more. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. 
Well, the sun is bright out there late this afternoon and evening. We take a live look with our SkyTrack camera up in Beloit. We've got plenty of sunshine, although you are going to start to notice a little more higher level cloud cover begin to work in from the west and southwest. This is kind of ahead of a cold front that'll pass through as we head through the night tonight, bringing us a slight increase in cloud cover and maybe a sprinkle or two. But uh, as we went throughout this afternoon, I hope you were able to get out one to enjoy the day because it was a very nice day, although a little on the gustier side. But two, maybe you were able to enjoy the eclipse. Now, while we didn't get completely dark here, like those in the path of totality did, we did see kind of just a little dim in some of the uh, sunlight as we reached that maximum eclipse time. And what's really neat to see and kind of a nerd moment here is looking at visible satellite, you can actually see the path uh, of the eclipse. Now, visible satellite imagery uses the sun in order to see the clouds and the surface um, here of the Earth and kind of little features we can pick out. You can actually also see snow cover too on the ground with visible satellite imagery. So when we lose that, you actually see the shadow of the sun move across the country from southwest to northeast. And then once the eclipse passes, you see the cloud cover come back in. Infrared satellite imagery is what we use at night to be able to look at and get a good view of the clouds. Now what we're seeing actually is the beginning of the sun setting here just off the east coast. So pretty neat to experience that today. You may have also noticed, too, our temperature drop as the eclipse started to develop 1 o'clock. Most of us were in the low uh, to mid-60s, but as we reached the 2 o'clock hour, there was actually a good couple degree temperature drop as the eclipse started to take place. In fact, Rockford went from 64 down to 62. I know some places, and some of you mentioned, temperatures dropping from 64 down to 59, and also a drop in the solar radiance. Uh, maybe you measured that from your solar panels too. Notice the drop in the uh, watts of the incoming solar radiation uh, when the eclipse was taking place. Temperature right now, we're up to 68 in Rockford, 65 in Freeport, 67 in Rochelle, and 66 degrees right now in DeKalb. We'll continue with a fairly quiet evening, a little on the breezy side. Southwest winds coming in about 10 to 20 miles per hour. The cloud cover will gradually work in here as we go through the night tonight. Again, as I mentioned, we may see a sprinkle or a brief light shower too, but that is out of here by the time we get into tomorrow. A mix of sun and clouds going into tomorrow afternoon as our temperatures are again back into the 60s. Now the only thing you're really going to notice is the wind shifting from the uh, southwest today, more so to the west tomorrow. Little cloud cover Tuesday night into Wednesday. Wednesday we've got high pressure building in, so again that keeps us pretty quiet and temperatures are back into the mid 60s. So we've got a string of nicer days coming up. But by the time we get into Wednesday night and then into Thursday, a little more cloud cover comes in. Storm system down to the southwest of us will actually bring an area of low pressure closer to us and increase the chance for rain. So where's that low right now? Well, it sits here across the southwest portion of the U.S. and northern Mexico. You can actually see that low up to the north across the upper Midwest and the northern plains and then severe weather developing through east Texas here this evening. So what's going to happen? This low pressure system becomes the dominant low over the next couple of days. This one down to the south. These two systems kind of merge together uh, late Wednesday into Thursday. We pull that moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico and voila, you've got rain showers and maybe a rumble of thunder or two. Right now looks like a couple tenths of an inch of rainfall. Could see at most maybe a half an inch of rain throughout the day on Thursday and it will be cooler. Wind will pick up too, so northeasterly wind will be coming in. We're 60 then on Friday and then we warm back up. It looks like as another warm front comes in, uh, if the warm front slows down, those numbers may come down a little bit, but right now, mid-60s on Saturday, could be in the mid-70s then by Sunday. That would be nice. All right, thanks, Candace. Scott's in next with sports. He says tonight's NCAA championship basketball game should be a gigantic matchup in more ways than one. And gamblers were all in on yesterday's NCAA women's championship game. Well, what did you call it? Your nerd moment when you showed oh, us yeah. the clouds? That was really interesting. The, the visible satellite. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's so neat. There's so many neat facets. You know, when you look and, and um, with the temperature drop and, of course, the you know darkness that took place and just watching it all. But yeah, the visible satellite imagery, watching the shadow just go from southwest to northeast. I mean, even if you weren't able to experience the eclipse, it's still pretty cool to it see. It is. <laughs> it is for sure. And, and yes, it is a nerd moment. It might <laughs> be my only nerd moment, but you know, it's a nerd moment. It's an exciting moment. Um, cloud cover up to the north with an area of low pressure. Rain showers to the north too. Cold front comes in tonight. We're down 
It's about 43 degrees tonight, 65 for tomorrow, mid upper 60s on Wednesday, and then rain by Thursday. All right, thanks, Candace, and thanks for watching. Have a good evening.